Okay. You can hear me right now? Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Shushan Zhao from the Ohio State University. And today it's my great pleasure to be here to present VSGS, virtualizing SGS on Cloud. So, I am the SV project with you guys. Uh, and this is a joint work with Meng Yuan Li, Professor Yin Tian Zhang, and my advisor, Professor Zhiqiang Lin. So before we talk about the project, let's first take a look at the TE or trusted execution environments in the cloud. So it's nothing new, so, but, but it did, did not make it into the cloud until very late. Like uh, in the blue part, those are the events that TE gets into the cloud. So for cloud, usually we use an x86 platform, and on this platform, the enclave kind of TE, the standard, de facto standard is the, is the Intel SGX, and it was first introduced in 2015 on the sixth gen core series, the Skylake, uh, and since then, it has built a rich existing ecosystem. But SGX suffers from a problem, and that we call it vendor locking. And what's that? Basically, your apps got to be written into binary form to call those SGX instructions. And it's, it has to be written specifically for it. And you can't just run it elsewhere. So before the search and Xeon scalable series, you can't run this in the cloud because all the Xeon server chips don't support it. And you obviously don't run it on Epic. And we got to. Well, rest in peace, desktop embedded SGX because Intel ditched it since the 12th gen core this year. And well, let's put that aside, but we also find a new trend in the industry, in the, in the cloud industry, and this what we call decoupling T's from hardware. And basically it's kind of a strong desire from cloud providers, and we see a lot of attempts, but the compatibility is a huge issue. So for example, Google Silo is some sort of like SDK level to try to implement this kind of thing. And it's a unified SDK that if you write an app for it, it will, it will help you to do all the backend things to adapt it to a real hardware TE, but you've got to rewrite your app for it. And we also see some like AWS Nitro Enclave that virtualize the, virtualize the Enclave into using the hypervisor technologies. Uh, but you have to trust the hypervisor and also you're gonna, you're going to rewrite your app for SDK either. So ideally, the copying TE from hardware should not just sacrifice its compatibility, we think. And that's from industry, but from research in the in academic, we see another trend. It's called software-defined TE. And basically, it's, so you still have a hardware TE right there to implement the basic isolation, but the interface exposed towards the software is done using, is done also use, use software. So it allows you to, to enable flexibility on deployment, fast feature evolution, and fast bug fixes. For example, on SGS processors, if you got an SGS1 processor, you'll never got SGS2 on it. And so you can see right here. So if you compare it to, to the hardware implementations, like you'll see that isolation is always done by hardware, but the interface below it, while for SGS, SEV, and trust on this kind of hardware TE, so you got they bind the interface based into the hardware. But for Komodo, like this example, so they implement the whole thing in software, and they, they're based on trust zone. So your Komodo app can just run atop of the Komodo interface, which is a software-based thing. So we boil it down to what people demand. They demand an enclave, enclave-based T in the cloud with no vendor locking. Uh, oh, sorry. And they want to decouple T's from hardware with good compatibility, and it's better to be software defined. And so here's our solution. We're just gonna, gonna bring SGS to SEV. So you don't have to choose Intel to run SGS apps. And it's got binary compatibility, and we implement it using software. So let's bring back to that table, and you can see that for VSGX, we got, S we got isolation based atop SEV, but the interface is now using, written in software and it's adapted to SGX. So you can just run SGS ARM clips on it. Okay, so I know it's a TE session, probably most of you are familiar with SGS and SCV, but just in case, here's a quick tour to it. So for SGX, it's there to, to, to prevent a, an app from being picked by, by the OS. You know, OS is super powerful, they can just basically do anything. But a good OS, well, that's okay, 
But if the OS is a bad, it's a bad one, it can, it can take your data. It can even modify your data. It can do a lot of things. So Intel basically said that if we put a portion of memory and execution outside the control of OS and untrusted app, and we just let the OS to do management without actually touching the thing, then you can protect the memory confidentiality and the control flow. Uh, so while that seems simple, they gave a very quite straightforward workflow. So basically, you just create an empty enclave. You add pages to it, like your, your binary pay code pages to it. And after that, you, cal you calculate the measurement hash, and you compile it with a signed version. And if all the paths, your enclave is launched. And the control flow is it's like it's using a limited interface to prevent things from going wrong. So, so the, for the, from the untrusted app part, you can do e-enter to specific, to specific entry points. And when exit, it will just exit back like a function call return. And this Intel defines something called e-calls in the SDK, such as a wrapper of e-enter and e-exit to perform this stuff. And it basically allows the untrusted app to just call these unclip functions like regular function calls. And the memory access here, the enclave is mapped into the same virtual address space as the untrusted app, but the access is a single way access. So the enclave tr can access anything outside, but the outside can't, can't access anything inside. Well, enough about SGS, here's about SCV. And it's quite the same story like SGS, but this time it's about VMs and hypervisors. So hypervisors in the past can just access VMs like randomly, but SVV is here to defend against malicious hypervisor. Basically, it encrypts the entire VM, and the VM can explicitly share its data to the outside, but not vice versa. The hypervisor can't do anything. And it allows you to deploy an encrypted image. So the SGS model is a fusion of the two. So you can see, we put the enclave. What if we put the enclave into another SVV protected VM and to run it? So it's still the same isolation as against the hypervisors, against the OS, the regular OS on the right side, the app. So, but the design has some, has some goals to be, to be more in detail. It's like, we want a binary compatibility, we want a comparable security guarantee with both SJS and SCV, and we want a reasonable performance, but why, why the, the SCV, with, why comparable with SCV? Because we think VSGS should work like an SGS module plugged directly onto an SCV machine. So your original VM should still be SCV protected, while the new VM, well, it's like the SGS module. So the challenge is quite, we got a lot of challenge right here. So how do you do isolation? How do you perform emulation? So your memory access problem, your, how do you connect the components, and your, how do you handle the control flow? So enclave isolation, like we talked about, we put the enclave into a specific VM. We call it enclave VM or EVM. And your original VM is called the AVM or app VM. So in the model, it's a two VM architecture. And we put one single enclave per VM. So this allows to perform enclave isolation. And uh, so you can see here, the EVM is basically what we talk about, the, v the VSGS module that plugs onto an SV machine. And the AVM is your good old VM, where you deploy, the user deployed. But how do we handle instruction emulation? Like you don't have SGX instruction handling on SCV. So what we, do, what we did is that we hooked the UD trap or undefined instruction trap. So in that handler, we can check and emulate all the instructions, but not that simple. You see, instructions, SGS instructions works on sensitive data structures and must be protected. So they must be handled within the EVM, right? So what we did is that we, we emulate everything according to Intel SGS manual, but we send, we send the instruction emulation as a request to the EVM. And when, when the EVM is done, it sends the result back. So by this way, we can ensure that all the instructions are emulated properly. What about memory access? You still remember the one-way memory access. So for Intel, they, they gave it a fancy name called EPC, but basically it's about, it's, it's just the enclave protected memory, and it's what they call enclave page cache. So it's quite trivial, you just map pages to the EVM because it's, because it's isolated from the AVM and from the hypervisor, they can't access it. But what about enclave trying to access something outside in the untrusted memory? So 
what we perform is that, what we did is that we perform something called fetch and map mechanism. Is that when you fall into a page fault, we'll just fetch that untrusted page from the AVM towards the EVM so that the, and map it to the EVM so the EVM can access it, the Angular can access it. And also because, the, because here's around two VMs, so the pages, there are two, co two copies of the page. So we also created something called a switcher syncing, which actually actively syncs across the two VM about the page changes. So now we have to connect all the components together. We got two VMs, how do we connect it? So we do something called cross VM communication. And the challenge right here is, uh, you should remember, the AVM is SV protected. So we can't just, we have to rely on the hypervisor. Of course we can do TCP, right? But they're just slow. So for performance-wise, we implemented our own mechanism, which is based on sharing memory. And you don't want AVM to share anything to hypervisor because that's really dangerous. That would breach SV security. So what we did is that we encrypted the whole memory channel and we see mapped it. So it means that you, the hypervisor can't alter anything or we're just fault. And we also, pre we also use a unique session number to prevent replay attacks. What about control flow? What about call, calling, those un, calling those unclear functions? I know a lot of guys cares about that. So just like SGS, we use ENT and EXIT. Also, we handle the routine of AEX to feature of SGS, which handles the fault happening in the, in the SGS enclave. And for ENT, it's quite simple. So you just first perform an ENT so, and send that request to the EVM, and we create a new thread for it to execute. When that's, we tell the AVM to we tell the AVM to put the original thread to sleep, and now you have something execute, executing in the EVM. The original thread is just sleeping right there. For e exit, the when enclave tries to exit the un, exit from the enclave, it, it, the thread will be killed in the EVM, and the EVM thread will be woken up again to, to return back to execution. E X something similar, but reversed, so that will be a very detailed design, so it's quite similar, but just reversed. So we implemented our prototype using 16,000 lines of code, but most of them in the kernel, and they're done in C, it's quite a large work. So we tested the whole system on an AMD Epic 7251 processor, and the result is, is here, we tested the capability, so we can run Wolf SSL, a cryptographic library, uh, we got some byte mark, we got byte mark running on it. Uh, we also got the Intel GMP, S GMP library for Intel SGX. And as a re review requested, we run Graven SGX, which is a large label S. So here are the performance. While well, the figures are too small, and uh, but they boils down to this table. And what what's that? It means the average overhead of an Enclave system instruction is is about it's about one microsecond, one microsecond, oh, sorry, one millisecond. And for, for the Uncle user instruction, it can run as slow as 0 0.79 microseconds or about 1891 when it involves in cryptographic actions. But how does that turn into real world performance? And we run byte mark. Here's the comparison. So we divided the score of a vanilla AMD SV VM to our, to our score and also an Intel SGX from the Intel SGX machine just for, for a comparison. So you can see that while more than half of them showed some similar scores, uh, a few of them show some very staggering and overwhelming difference. So the performance drop right here is only observed from IO intensive workloads. And that means you fetch a lot of like untrusted memories or you do a lot of e-calls which which, which turns into a lot of emulation, and that will be slow, but otherwise it will be just, just fine. And for Graven, the launching is quite slow because it's a very, very large enclave. It's about 256 megabytes. But you can see that most of the time right there, uh, the, the light-colored light part is wasted on the E extend, which calculates the measurement hash. So we think that E extend only calculates 256 bytes each time. And we think you can pack all of, a lot of multiple e extends into one request so we can accelerate the performance. And for CUIL, the performance is like seven times slower because it's, it's doing a lot of IOs and you know, networking. But when it comes to a pure computation workload like GMP Bench, it's quite similar, the, the performance. 
And one of the most important application in the enclave is about cryptographic. So we tested WolfCrypt. Uh, the result right here is about 0.9 times slower than, than Intel SGX. So we think that's a very reasonable slowdown. And so here's the VSGF system, but it's not perfect. And we think there are a lot of future work can be done. For example, now in the EVM, we run a, a Linux kernel. That's because I'm familiar with it. Uh, but, but actually, for SGX, you, don't have to, you, you can't just run any system. You can't run any syscall inside the VM. So it does not have to be POSIX compatible. And we think self can be a good choice if we get support on SCV. And if the user does not need a VM to be SV protected, you don't have to do all those encryptions. You can also map untrusted pages to the, to the EVM for, perform, for even higher performance in real time. And also, you can see that the method is quite generic. So we are now virtualizing SGS enclaves on MD SCV, but how would you feel about virtualizing SGS on, on enclaves on Intel MKTME? Or what about vTrust zone? So here's the conclusion. We emulated SGS on SCV with binary compatibility. So we released SGS from vendor locking. We decoupled SGS from hardware. And the whole system is software defined. So I'd like to take your question. And you can just get, get your copy of VSGS from GitHub right now. Or you can just visit the two labs homepage. Home Thank you. Good, we have time for questions. Yeah, back here. Come on up to a microphone. So, thank you, great talk. Uh, like you said, I'm Andreas Kogler. I'm from the Hart University of Technology. And I just wanted to ask you, are there any plans for generalizing attestation in Trusted execution environments, if they're simulated. Uh, so, so pardon me, can you repeat your um, question? So the attestation usually relies highly on the CPU. You want yeah. to attestate that you are running on a certain CPU on that system. Yeah. So how would you virtualize that in some regard? Oh, OK, I, I know what you mean. So you mean how do you virtualize the attestation in VSGX? Yeah, for instance. Yeah, so in Intel SGX, so the attestation is based on a secret baked into the CPU. It's a 128-bit long integer, basically. And all the keys are derived from it. So you can derive the secret from it and just use it to, to sign the reports. And here in our system, uh, we bake the same secret into the, into, the, into the EVM kernel. So you can see, I mean, OK, so I just found a random picture. So you can see here. So we, we just bake the same secret into the Enclave kernel. And you can see that. SEV allows deploying an encrypted image. So you can just pre bake it into that. But also, you can use SEV's attestation to provision, provision a new secret into the EVM either. So it's quite flexible. But the semantic wise, you just need that secret and you can do all, all the things. Yeah. OK, yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Sam Kumar from UC Berkeley. Hello. Um, my understanding is that some of these hardware enclaves have different security guarantees from others. For example, I've heard that some earlier versions of AMD's enclaves, for example, have weaker integrity protection. Um, does that affect, so, so if I use a VSGX to run an SGX enclave on, on, for example, a different hardware enclave, do I still get the same security guarantees as SGX, or could that change depending on the enclave I'm actually running it on? Uh, yeah, that's a very great question. And so in, so we can't claim the exact security, but it's a comparable security because, because the, of the isolation. And we think that in SEV, so there are a lot, of, a lot of attacks targeting SEV, but they have fixed it in the recent updates. And for the SEV, SMP is quite, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's quite fully featured. And, and the isolation is quite strong, actually. Yeah, so yeah, there can be some difference in it, but I think overall the idea here is about the it's about the isolation is done by hardware, and as long as that isolation is guaranteed, as they claimed, then we can adapt these models together to each other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. More questions. 
All right, let's, uh, let's move on and let's thank the speaker. Thank you.